Praise the Lord, you've reached Pastor Priscilla Halling. Let us go to the throne of grace. Eternal Heavenly Father, once again, we are grateful because you are our Lord and Savior. You are our righteous King of glory. The one that shall come in and rest and abide and rule and modify, purge, manifest, make known your will and your way. to these earthly vessels as the excellency of your power resides with us. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for your holy and righteousness. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for your justification, sanctification, and future glorification. We thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, For all that you can do. In Jesus' name we pray and give you the glory you so rightfully do. If you would turn with me to Philippians 4 19. Philippians 4 19. Philippians 4 19. And it reads as this But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But a conjunction. That connects the previous thought to the succeeding thought. Verse 18 said, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Ephesus, the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. So he's saying that he has a sweet sacrifice that was well-pleasing unto God. But he's making it known that as he sacrificed unto God, the things that he has received, he understand that it was given as a sacrifice that was pleasing and well acceptable unto God. He said, I have received of Ephroditus the things which were sent from you. He's thanking the people for those things that were sent to them, to him. Not that he desired a gift, but he desired the fruit that may abound. But he's thanking God for what he received from the people that was sent to him, that he received it as a sweet sacrifice, acceptable and well-pleasing unto God. Here Paul is saying, he thanked God for the sacrifice you made and the gift that you gave. He thanked God that what you did was well pleasing in God's sight because you didn't have to give it. But it was received as a sweet sacrifice because it was done without motives. It was done to please God. It was done to honor and glorify God. It was given out of love, not of necessary necessity, but it was given as a love off, a desire to help support the ministry, a desire to sow into the kingdom because of the labor that Paul had been doing that was very instrumental to many. And so Paul is saying in verse 18, I have all and abound. 
I, I'm, I'm doing well. And I'm full. I'm not in what? Having received the things which were sent from you, I thank you. It was very sufficient. It was a super abundance that you didn't have to do. It met a lot of areas because of your sweet sacrifice that you gave that was well-pleasing unto God. When we give unto God to others, no matter what it is, when it's done in the right motive, we're giving because we're giving out of a heart for God. He receives it as a sweet sacrifice unto him. In other words, there's no attachment to it. There's no, I'm giving you this so that you would do this. I'm giving you this so that you would agree with me and do this. It was an offering a love offering of abundance that was acceptable and well-pleasing in God's sight just because it was given out of love. And so Paul said, I thank you. But in 19, he said something very profound. But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This verse is part of a larger passage where the apostle Paul is thanking the Philippians for their financial support for his ministry. He assures them that God will provide for their needs just as they have provided for his needs. The verse teaches that believers can trust in God's provisions and that he is able to meet their needs. It also emphasizes that God's provision comes from his riches and glory, not from human efforts or resources. The reference to Christ Jesus highlights the role of Jesus in mediating between God and humanity and suggests that God's provision is available to believers through their faith in Jesus Christ. Think about this. God's provision comes from his riches in glory. That's a powerful statement to think about. Let's take a look and see what are God's riches in glory? It's about the abundance and boundless resources of God. Something that we don't quite often think about. God's riches and glory are not just material things, although they can encompass material things, but they're also the spiritual boundless resources that he gives. He gives us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. He comforts when we need comforting. He preserves and keeps when we're going through something that we're not dealing with it alone. You see, God's provision is not limited just by earthly circumstances or resources. It comes from his unlimited divine resources. It can also refer to all of his spiritual blessings and rewards that God has provided for his people to dispense among them when necessary. Some minor things that we do, we're actually storing up Riches in heaven. The Bible says we're storing up rewards in heaven when we do things that are pleasing in God's sight. What they did in verse 18 
that was viewed as a sweet smelling sacrifice, acceptable, well pleasing in the sight of God, was storing up rewards for spiritual blessings to be released when it would be most profitable for them to receive. God operates in the reciprocity. As you're doing unto the kingdom of God, what is pleasing and acceptable in his sight, those are rewards, almost as if when you get to heaven, you'll receive your crown of glory and your reward from God. He also allows those rewards to be here. As we live on this earth, they're stored up in heaven and they will be fully revealed when it is God's timing to reveal all that you have done that stored up rewards for you. The verse affirms that God is the ultimate provider for believers and that he is able to meet their needs and exceed their expectations through his inexhaustible resources. Let's just think about some things. Have you ever done anything for anybody? Just out of the love of God. Not because you expected them to give you anything in return or to do something for you or that you expected to try to influence them to take a side. You just gave out of the love of God. And God later, you don't even think about it. It could be years pours out a blessing that you don't even have room to receive because you stored up rewards. And when things were happening, God began to release the rewards and provisions kept coming. Maybe you needed a word from God and he deposited within you a word. Maybe you needed to minister through music and he deposit the operative movement to minister through music, through the outpouring, the overflowing of his spirit moving in you at such that moment that the whole environment changes as you're orchestrating through the ministry through his power, the excellency that's within you, and it's overflowing into the lives of all those that are beholding your ministry. See, we don't always understand the spiritual blessing because we always want to look at the material blessing. But God said, I will give you spiritual spiritual blessing, rewards that's been stored up more than just material blessings. And it's the spiritual blessings that are necessary to get you through this life. Because the material items, the unsaved can acquire those things. But what they can't acquire are the spiritual blessings and rewards from God. Until they receive him. And so God is showing you, don't just settle for the material possession, which can be blessing when you use them for the kingdom. But also, Know that the spiritual blessing, the rewards that are being stored up in heaven, 
will come to you at the moment you need them the most. And so Paul is saying that God shall supply all of your needs because of what you did. You store it up, spiritual blessings and rewards from God. That when you need it the most, God is going to overflow through his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, supplying all of your needs. It's not in a human way of return. It's in a spiritual way of return. It's an investment. You invested in the kingdom. Now the kingdom is going to invest in you. And many times we fail to see that. That when you invest in the kingdom, know that God will never forsake you. He will make sure he pours out your spiritual blessings and your reward that has been stored up in heaven. And begin to invest back into you. Reciprocity, spiritual reciprocity from God. And many times we fail to realize that and we fail to fully receive it. When you're doing for the kingdom because you love God and there's no undermotive agenda, that's when the spiritual blessings and the rewards are stored for such a moment that God wants to overflow back into your life and invest. The God of glory that understands how we have to operate in this world, but we're not up to it. The God of glory that understands that he has riches that are innumerable. They are boundless resources that he can get to you however he wants. You see, some of you are looking for the riches of the world. Unsaved can get that. There's a lot of unsaved people that are very wealthy. Some of their mammon is righteous and some are unrighteous. But the spiritual blessing and the material possessions that come from God as an overflow because of the investment that you have done unto the kingdom are innumerable. Why you don't have to tell people what you've done or how it was done because God stores it as rewards. That's why you don't have to make known any situation because God rewards you. The devourer will never be able to keep devouring and destroying because what God will do, he will release his spiritual blessings and rewards and pour them out into your life that you won't even be able to fully comprehend or have room to receive. There will be so bountifully Spiritually, abundance, spiritual, because of who he is. He does it when he knows it needs to be done. Right when it's needed, he'll execute. And he knows right when it's needed. Because that's the God that he is. 
And God's spiritual blessings is not about what you see from humanity. It's what you see in the spiritual realm of how God rewards, how he restores what you have saved up in heaven as he releases it to you because of your faithfulness to the kingdom. It could have been your faithfulness in praying for someone that you don't really know that well, that may have just crossed your mind through the Holy Spirit and you begin to intercede on that page. It could have been an offering that you put in to the kingdom and you thought no more about it, but God released spiritual because he knew the releasing was now for the moment to be released. It could have been a ride you gave somebody to work or to Bible study or to home or to a retreat. You stored up reward. You honored him with what God had given you and then sharing love, companion. To another. You'll store it up reward. It could have been an encouragement word that you said to someone who may have been going through something. Or just a listening ear for someone who just needed to talk some things through but didn't want to have an answer given. They just wanted to speak of their situation. Whatever the situation was, when it was done with the right motive, God received it as a sweet sacrifice that was acceptable and well-pleasing in his sight. And when you need it to receive from all of the outpouring that you have done, your reward comes from God. You see, some of you are trying to remind me what you did for them to get your reward. What good does it do? If you're seeking reward from people, when you can get innumerable reward from a holy and righteous God, what good does it do? You only do things for those that you are friends with, but you can't do it to those that you may not know or may not like. Because the Bible tells us it's easy to treat someone nice who you like, and especially someone who you think can do something for you. But try doing something for somebody who can't do anything for you, who may not like you and you may not like them. But because you love God, you're going to treat them in the love of God as much as possible and be well-pleasing in God's sight. You could be in a store and an elderly person can't reach something on the top shelf. And you might assist taking something off a shelf and giving it to somebody you don't know. Sweet sacrifice pleasing in the sight of God. You're not asking for anything from her or him. You just assist it because you have the mobility to be able to reach up and bring it to them. You're utilizing the abilities that God has given you to assist another who may not be able to do that. See, we have to understand that when we do things for God, 
things that are well-pleasing in his sight, he remembers and he rewards. Not just when we get the glory and we receive that crown of righteousness for our faithfulness. But even while we're here on earth, because he tells us he wants us to be in good health and prosper. And that should be our prayer and our desire. Because that's his desire for us. So we should never give up hope with whatever that happens. Because God's desire is that you be in good health and prosper. And he wants you to pray his desire. He wants you to live his desire. He wants you to yield to his desire. And petition him for his desire. And so... As we think about the things that God is telling us, he wants us to honor what honors him the most. You honor what honors God. Because there are vessels of honor and there are vessels of dishonor. And God reveals the vessels that are honored and the vessels that are dishonored. And we are admonished to be vessels of honor. Vessels of honor, honor God. And anything that doesn't honor God are not vessels of honor. And we are committed to honor God. We're not committed to honor but does not honor God. Let me put it this way. Daniel did not honor King Nebuchadnezzar when he fell on his knees and prayed to God because the decree said he was not supposed to pray to God. And although King Nebuchadnezzar was a ruler, Daniel didn't honor him because the ruler was telling Daniel to do something that would dishonor God. You can't honor what instructs you to dishonor God. We are to honor God. So when people talk about honor, they better go into a little more detail. Because what is dishonoring God, you don't honor. Daniel honored God. He did not do everything to honor the king. He didn't go to the king's banquet. He turned them down. That's dishonor when you don't come to the king's banquet when he invites you. The decree was he wasn't supposed to pray. He didn't listen to the decree. He prayed. And God honored Daniel 
because then you honored God. There's a reciprocity, a spiritual blessing and rewards when you honor God. When you do what you do that is well pleasing in God's sight, it honors God's most. And when it honor God, when it's time for you to receive, for God to pour into your life, he'll release it, the spiritual blessings, the innumerable resources. He'll release it. You won't know when, you won't know how, but he'll release it. And the beautiful, comforting, faithfulness of God is that it will come when you need it the most. And sometimes you would have forgot what you have done to store up rewards in heaven. But God will return it to you innumerable. That's why it's important to always have a pure heart in everything you do for the kingdom. Do it because you love God and you want to honor God. Not because you want rewards from humanity. Because if you're going to do it to receive rewards from humanity, then your reward will come from humanity. But if you're doing it, to receive from God. Your reward that comes from God, the spiritual blessing, will be innumerable. If you're doing it to be blessed by people, people will try to stop your blessing. They will try to change your blessing. They will try to modify the blessing. They will try to determine what they want you to receive and what they don't want you to receive. But if what you're doing is for God and God alone, because you love God and you want to honor God, God's going to honor you back because you honored him. And he's going to pour out those spiritual blessings and rewards despite of humanity. It won't be about humanity. It'll be about God. That's why they're called spiritual blessings. Come from God and God alone. That's why they're called heavenly rewards. That comes from God and God alone. And it's in those moments that he moves upon your life. It may be a moment where you need peace. Because all trials and tribulations are coming at you in all areas of your life. And God just may release a spiritual blessing of peace in the midst of the situation. And nobody can understand why you have peace. Because it came from God. Because if you were dependent on people to give it to you, you're not going to receive it. Because this peace that God gives you is not the peace of the world. And the world can't take it away. And the joy that God gives you it's not the joy of the world, and the world can't take it away. The spiritual blessings and rewards that God provides and reveals according to those who understand. But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Think about it. Paul was letting those that was at the place with Epaphroditus had received these things and sent to him. He was letting them know what you did was well-pleasing in God's sight. 
And I thank you for it because you did it genuinely. You didn't do it because you was coerced. You didn't do it because you were promised a return. You didn't do it because you thought you would receive something. You didn't do it for the wrong motives. You did it genuinely out of love. And so it was well-pleasing in God's sight. And know this, my God, he gonna supply all of your needs. Whatever you might have need of. I don't know what your need is. God knows. I can only partially know some things. But God knows all things. And God knows exactly when to release what you have a need of. So he told them. God is going to supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Because Paul knew, I can't supply your need. I can only assist with the earthly things. But earthly things are minute to the spiritual need that God can manifest, that will carry you through when the material blessings or the material possession may abound or not abound. That's all God was saying. I can carry you through. You see, when you give because you have a genuine heart to do things, God always returns. He always returns. That's just how God operates. He said, test me. Try me. Don't tempt me, but try me and see that I'm faithful. See that my word will never return void, but it will always prosper what it went forth to do. That's how God is. You don't have to worry or be concerned. Your God will Provide whatever you have need of. Innumerably. You either trust them or you don't. You either depend upon them or you don't. But he's a faithful God. And he's a God that will never tell you something that's not true. That's who he is, a God of truth. That's what he is, a God of wisdom. And he doesn't operate like the world. It's a spiritual blessing that can manifest into material possessions. Look what he did for Abraham. He gave them, he gave him great material possessions. He even took a land that had no profitableness in the natural sense. But when God touched, it was more fruitful, more fertile, more profitable. Than the land his nephew took, who he thought took the best. So, as I close this message, this message is to encourage those 
who may forget, who may have thought that God forgot about them, or who thought that God just is not moving according to their wills and way. But you need to know, God is a spirit. And either you're going to put your faith and trust in the spirit of God, or you're going to put your faith and trust in the earthly thing that will fail you. Because God's riches and glory can be outpoured in ways you can't even imagine. When he's ready to restore, when he's ready to provide reciprocity because of the rewards that you have accumulated, because of the spiritual blessings that he's ready to execute, they will be so innumerable. And God will reveal it and do it. I know that to be true. He can do it by leading you to a place. to operate on his behalf. He can do it by giving you time to labor for. He can do it through investing in your life. See, there's a moment for laboring and there's a moment for rest. And he knows when he wants you to rest and when he wants you to labor. When he wants you resting where he can be investing in you. So that while you're laboring, you're outpouring what was invested in you. That's how good God is. Innumerable in all his ways. Don't ever forget what God is able to do. In fact, he reminds us that he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask. Think about this. Ask or even think. Uh, because it's innumerable. He knows what to give, which you don't even know to ask for. He knows what to give, but you don't even know to think of. Because he knows all things and he's able to do all things at his appointed time. And so the riches that you receive from God, materialistic possessions, spiritual blessings, and rewards. No human can stop. Because they come from God. How do we know? When God delivered the people from Pharaoh out of Egypt. He placed upon them the desire to give abundantly to them as they left. In fact, the Bible said that they were given so much that they didn't even have room to take everything that was offered to them. 
Why would anyone give you almost everything they have in riches of value when they didn't even pay you properly or treat you properly when you work for them and you're leaving? And now you're leaving, being drawn out by God, and you have more than you would have ever accumulated while you stayed there and worked for them. Only God could have done that. God had taken their reward for how they prayed and asked for a deliverer, how they labored laboriously and received unrighteous mammon. They didn't receive what they should have. God heard their prayers, saw their tears, saw the injustice, delivered them, and made their captives give them more than they could have ever worked for. That was God. That was not Pharaoh, a ruler, doing something that was acceptable and well-pleasing in God's sight. He wouldn't have given them nothing. But God moved upon it to release what they righteously were owed. Spiritual blessings and rewards that God was providing as he took them away. God will never carry you to a place that he's not bringing with you the resources that you need when you get there. We may not see the resources we may not understand the resources. We may not really adequately can think of how God can do the resource. But when God places you where he wants, the resources will be there. They'll just come. Because he's a God of innumerable resources. That's just how he is. And many times we need to stop thinking like the world. We need to stop thinking about how God operates like the world. He doesn't operate like the world. He knows what he's doing. And if you trust him, you'll see the spiritual blessing that he knows better than anybody what he's doing. He's a spirit. And I'll just leave it like that. You can trust in chariots. You can trust in horses. You can trust even in colors. You can trust in material things. but you'll never receive the riches in his glory unless you fully trust in Christ Jesus. Riches in glory is what I'm titling this message. Riches in glory. <laughs> Riches in glory because of who he is. He's a God of great wealth that you can trust in him because of who he is. Riches in glory. If we trust God more, we will see how he can supply our need more. But unfortunately, we live in a world that we quite often conform to the world. So we'll put our faith and trust in the things and ways of this world as opposed to God. When God places within you something to do, 
You know it's coming from God because it really won't make sense to the world. And as you continue to do what God tells you to do, he'll begin to release the spiritual blessings because of your obedience to him. The God that he is, who's holy and righteous and pure, and all of his way. Be in God's hands. Because our hands. are powerless unless the excellency of the power of God is operating in these earthly vessels. That's why when you do what God has you to do, you can work in certain areas in certain things and excel because God is orchestrating the Telling process. He's orchestrating the elevation process because it's well pleasing in his sight. So never let someone define you by what God has never defined it you by. And it's unfortunate, but some people will not fully adequately trust in a holy and righteous God. And because they don't, they want you to operate the way they operate. And it's okay to tell them, I trust in God. And God alone. Because at the end of it all, I'm going to have to stand alone before him. As I live now in his presence. Let us get ready to pray. <sighs> Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, you are the epitome of righteousness, justification understanding love mercy, grace, love and kindness you provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus You are restored. And you are true and healthy so that we can always honor you and what we do. Father, I thank you. Because without you, I could do nothing. But with you, God, you are choosing yourself holy and righteous. And I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. A pure heart, a 
you have shown was take. Yeah. The hope that they could never imagine. Because the pure heart trusts you. A pure heart depends upon you. A pure heart loves you all of you and desires the most to please you. A pure heart knows the safety in the master's heart. Not being conformed to the world. And will of this world. And so, Father, I thank you that you are my comfort. That you are my provider. that you're able to spiritually release thank you God mm. thank you God If we would just trust you and allow your supernatural, wonderful, miraculous power to shift and move and execute and pour out the blessings and Jesus name my friend. Amen. 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 Sometimes you have to be reminded when your help comes. Who knows your need? Who provides and how it's all done? Who provides? Who orchestrates? Who speaks and brings into completion? And who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can even ask or think of? to the power that worketh within these earthly vessels. It's all done by Christ Jesus. And if you've never experienced His miraculous power to carry you through anything you could ever go through in your life. You can't fully understand. While some will have the ability to endure and persevere, it's because of the trust that's rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. You won't be moved by circumstances. You won't be moved by opinions. You won't be moved by subjectivity. You won't be moved by the elements of this world. You'll remain rooted 
and grounded in the foundation as a pillar that he, Christ Jesus, has established in your life. Unshakable faith. Faith that will make some not even be able to figure it out. Faith that will make some think you're crazy. They thought Noah was crazy when by faith he built the ark. But he obeyed God. And at that moment, he was well pleasing in his sight. Although later he became displeasing. And so it's important that as you live and move and operate pleasingly in his sight, that you don't allow the victory to move you into uneasy ways. God is so great and good. He never fails. He knows exactly when to orchestrate. More than you ever think. But the problem you'll find, even in scripture, you always have flesh, human, that want to orchestrate. Nebuchadnezzar tried to orchestrate Daniel's life. Abraham's nephew Lot tried to control Lot. It's always someone trying to control because they lack faith. And so they want you to act like them and think like them and operate like them. But the trailblazers, the one who excels, the one who are true leaders, they don't follow the norm. They won't change with the ways of the world. They won't change to fit in. Their desire will be to be well pleasing in the of God. Because first and foremost, it's the acceptability of God that pleases him. that stores up the rewards and later releases the spirit, the blessings when they're needed, which can also manifest into materialistic possession. And it's all coming from God. Amen. Amen. Amen.